Hey everybody, this is Robot here from ScooterWest.com, Vespa Motorsport here in San Diego. What do we got here? This is the Vespa ET4. You might just think, ah, oh, it's an older Vespa that they made a few years back. Um, but last year was the 70th, uh, 70th anniversary of the Vespa. When the ET4 came out in Europe in 1996, that was the 50th uh, anniversary for the Vespa. You know, they've been making Vespas since 1946, and in 1996, they came out with a revolutionary, revolutionary new model that uh, differed greatly from all the prior Vespas um, made before that. You know, all the prior Vespas, as you hear, you've heard the term shift, you know, shifties or a vintage Vespa, it's any of the vintage Vespas that have a two-stroke motor, and a manual transmission. I mean, there's one exception, they made a small frame that had a kind of an automatic transmission, but I'm not gonna talk about that. I wanna talk about the scooter that kind of started the modern Vespa revolution in 1996. So in the mid 90s, that's when I started to get into Vespas. And I started with the Vespa P200, which is a 200cc shifting Vespa, like a proper Vespa as a lot of people would call. And they made that for a very long span of time. They actually still make a variation of it today, but it started out in 1977. And through the 80s, there was very little change. They came out with the Vespa T5 and the PK series scooters, which is a small frame that kind of had, uh, I don't know, I guess an 80s style. They kind of added the edgy 80s style. If you ever look at 80s cars, they're real edgy. And they were just carrying over uh, changes in, you know, minor changes in design for the 80s. So in the late 80s and early 90s, Vespa tried to reinvent itself once again. Um, they came out with what they said was a revolutionary scooter called the Koza, uh, which ironically translates to thing in English. Um, it was a style that was disliked by many of the vintage Vespa or Vespa enthusiasts of the time. I guess they were just all Vespas prior, but um, they tried to add some modern touches to the Vespa with the Vespa Cosa and do some up updates. Uh, we'll flash up a photo of the, the Vespa T5, the PK, and the Cosa. So you have an idea of what they did for the 80s and 90s. Um, in my opinion, that was pretty stale years for Vespa. That's when automatic scooters were starting to take off from many other manufacturers, including at the end of the 90s, Piaggio came out with a, um, I think it was the Piaggio Zip and Sfera, NRG, a couple other automatic twist and go scooters. They were nothing like the Vespas. They were built much like all the other automatic scooters. It had a metal frame with plastic body. Um, in 1996, that's when the Vespa 50th anniversary was coming up and Vespa wanted to come up, or Piaggio wanted to come out with a Vespa that was revolutionary. So in 1996, I heard wind of the, the 50, 50 year anniversary and the party they had and the press release for this new Vespa. I said, well, I gotta get one somehow. I'm in the United States. Vespa hasn't been importing since 1981. I had classic Vespas as, as I've suggested, you know, prior to 1996, 97. Um, and I talked to a friend that would go to Euro Vespa every year and say, hey, you know, check out the new Vespas that are coming out, I'm kind of interested. You know, and I, at the time I didn't work for the shop, but I worked for a product design company. So um, I kind of was always interested in new designs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I found out they came out with this. And I gray market import, not this scooter, but this is another 97 Vespa ET4 that was imported pretty much the same time as the Vespa I brought over in 1997, late 1996. Um, this is a European market Vespa, and right next to it are the U.S. market Vespas that they started importing in 2001. So several years after the 50th anniversary that Vespa came back to the United States. Some of the revolutionary things with this new scooter, this is the first Vespa with a four-stroke engine and a four-stroke automatic engine. Like I said, there's one other model that had an automatic in it, but I'm not going to go into that. They also had a 50cc version of this in 1997 that had a um, direct fuel injected two-stroke 50cc. Um, I've only seen one of those, very little experience with them being in the United States. Um, 
but I pretty much brought this over and was pretty excited about it. It's rides like no other, uh, you know, the new Vespa or the modern Vespas have a ride like no other uh, plastic twist and go automatic scooter. You know, with the monocoque steel frame, they're very rigid, much like all the prior uh, model Vespas. It's a very, very unique trait of the, um, all the modern Vespas, which is pretty much 1996 to present. They all have steel frames, the single side swing arm, you know, with the wheel on the front that has individual lug nuts. Um, and those are the, the main traits and kind of have a reminiscent shape of the classic Vespas. Um, but this is the scooter that started it all. You know, pretty much every modern Vespa after this was mostly, you know, it was an evolution of this scooter. This was revolutionary when it came out in 1996. Um, as for the European model, um, there's some differences. You can see the badging, there's no reflectors. They had a completely different engine than what was found in the United States model, or pretty much any of the, um, the Vespa ET4s that were made 2000 and later. Another little neat thing is these uh, tires here. Um, they say Vespa on them. These are original tires, not the safest tires to ride on, but right there, they put Vespa on the tire. And they only did that for the first few years. The tire is nearly impossible to get. Um, later, they just went with Pirellis and Michelins. Um, but styling-wise, it's, it's identical to the, the scooters sold in the United States, like this uh, seafoam green one and the black one with the red accents. A um, couple other minor things, like the mirrors. Um, it's got a speedometer and kilometers. Um, and like I said, the engine's very unique. It's difficult to find parts for now because there's a very small run of this uh, unique motor. Uh, the motor, one positive thing is this motor is very smooth. It's well built, but the transmission's a little undersized compared to the um, later Vespas. You can even see the cover is much larger, larger on the, um, the later Vespa ET4s. So the Vespa ET4 had a run from 1996 to 2004. From 2005 to around 2013, 2012, somewhere in there, was the Vespa LX. And again, it wasn't anything revolutionary, but it was an evolution of the ET4. They kind of um, sharpened up the uh, lines on it. And this is kind of the last iteration of the Vespa LX right here. And it's got much sharper lines. It's nearly identical to the ET4 on how it rides. It's got a one inch larger front wheel. Uh, this, these last years had a fuel injected motor versus the carburetor motors of prior years. Um, this, this scooter pretty much had a 10 year run. Um, and in the middle of when they came out with this, another somewhere in between evolutionary and revolutionary, I would say, is the Vespa GT200 came out. I think that camera came out in Europe around 2000 or 1999, somewhere in that range, 2001. Um, in the United States, it was around 2002 when they started bringing the GT200. Um, pretty much, they've had evolutions all the way up to the modern Vespa GTS 300 Super with the ABS. You know, as if you've seen many of our other videos. Again, they've just made incremental steps, but it's essentially the same body. Um, back to the smaller size scooters, after the LX came the Sprint and Primavera. Right here, we got the 2018 orange Sprint. And that's pretty much what's current right up till today. Um, in 2017, they had a 70th anniversary, you know, much like that very first ET4 was their 50th anniversary model. Um, and that's where we, we're pretty much at with uh, modern Vespas. You know, there's been a lot of little um, evolutionary changes, fuel injection, anti-lock brakes, uh, better suspension. The frames have gotten r more rigid. They handle a little nicer. Um, but they're all based on the, pretty much the same build as that ET4. So back in the mid 90s, I was, as anybody was, the internet was just kind of just starting to become established. Everybody was reading magazines and other periodicals, but I saved a lot of the periodicals of the time for the Vespa 50th anniversary 
and thereafter all the way up till when they imported Vespa back to the United States. Um, in the United States, there was a magazine called Scoot Corley. It later changed to an, uh, an online magazine called Scoot, but it was an American magazine for scootering. It's kind of interesting. This is our shop in the 90s. We were selling little trinkets and all that kind of fun stuff, but I just thought I'd show that. Um, this is 1996, the 50th, 50-year uh, anniversary of the Vespa. This is Piaggio Giornale, which is the, um, the internal magazine for the Piaggio group. Um, it was a very exciting time for Piaggio in 1996 when they introduced the 50th year, 50-year anniversary Vespa ET4, that is. And I'll kind of go through some of the pages. This was one of their marketing um, campaigns they had called they call it the Time Surfer. Um, and I'll show you some more photos of that, the president of Piaggio at the time. And there's the ET4 at its introduction, very much like my silver ET4. Well, there it is right there. And they talk about all the design elements. It, this magazine's all in Italian, but I've kind of gone through. I was pretty excited to get this magazine at the time get my hands on it, because it wasn't easily, easy, easy to get, get a hold of this magazine. And they're talking about, they did a test of the ET4 on, a, I think, a very long, like, um, like desert trip. The, these are some pre-production models. And here's the Vespa Time Surfer marketing campaign. That's some pretty wild photos. The Vespa, the new Vespa, kind of back in the 40s. Um, and then all the way up to some futuristic Vespa ET4 in the future. Some pretty wild um, photo shoots or whatever they did back in the day. But this was pretty exciting, talking about the 50 year anniversary. This is the press kit for the, um, the 50 years of Vespa for the ET4 when it came out. Talks a little bit about the history, a lot of the marketing campaigns. You know, if you look at any of the history of uh, vintage Vespas, you'll see all these um, real famous uh, ad campaigns that they had. I guess I'll, oh, this is the fold-out for the ET4 and showing some of the revolutionary um, design cues of it. You can see this is the, the new engine. It's unlike the modern engines. It was a very short run of that, that four-stroke engine. In some ways, it's overbuilt in a very expensive motor. I've had one completely apart. They kind of overbuilt it. In the later motors, they simplified and made it more reliable in the process. Um, here's the 50cc fuel injected or direct injected motor, which is something I haven't really seen too much of. But it's, um, that's pretty much the ET4 right when it came out. This is the color I had, the first one I brought. This is pretty much Portofino green, which you find on modern Vespas uh, today. and the Time Surfer accessories they had that go along with it. Ironically, right in that same time frame, Apple released the iMac, which was, again, kind of, I wouldn't call it a, a revolutionary computer, but it's uh, design-wise, it was something pretty revolutionary. Uh, pretty much right in the mid-90s, um, you know, everything was starting to be, become computer-aided designed, so they were go everybody wanted to do complex curves, and you could see a lot of the styling cues of the original iMac in the Vespa, ET4 that is. An accessory catalog, everything from touch-up paint, the covers, nothing that exciting. The helmets, I do have the original helmet that they came out with, it's kind of a leatherette helmet, color match to this, the Vespa ET4s of the time. Full face helmets, I haven't really seen those. Other typical accessories. It's another marketing campaign with uh, on a postcard for Piaggio. This is um, Scootering Magazine of England. There's the price of the ET4 right when it came out, 1997. So 2,600 pounds around today, that would be about I don't know, if you convert to today's dollars, you're talking about maybe 5,500, 6,000, so pretty much um, 
Um, similar price to what the Vespa Primavera Sprint are. So there's my ET4 in 1997. Not the best photo. This is before I had a digital camera. There it is again. I went on a camping trip somewhere. I don't remember. I think it went all the way up north, northern California. There it is with around 14,000 kilometers. Can't really see it too well, but a black and white photo. I only had a couple photos of it, but um, the few years I had it was pretty exciting. Um, here's a Vespa rally in 1999. I think this is a Mara Vespa in um, San Diego. I think this guy's name is Eric Camello. I think something like that. Uh, there's my ET4 on the cover of American Scooterist magazine, which this was another ma you know periodical in the United States for Vespa Club of America. Again, I don't I don't think they have a printed uh, publication anymore. You know the magazines have kind of gone away, and during. The Mare Vespa 1999, there was a, a European Vespa ET4. I have no idea where that scooter is now, but it's an ET4 that was raffled off at a Mare Vespa. They weren't, you got to keep in mind in 1999, they weren't officially imported into the United States at that time yet. Again, this is uh, late 1999. Another Scoot Corley. Uh, there's an article about Vespa plans to import to the United States, kind of talks about the ET4s um, and all that. I think the, this magazine is early 2000 or late 1999. So the writing is on the wall, yeah, winter 1999, that Vespa is coming back to the United States. Uh, again, another uh, Piaggio Giornale, uh, the year 2000. They came out with an update to the Vernable PX that they've been making for years and years. Not really anything to do with the, um, uh, the ET4 or any of the modern Vespas, but they did do an, a styling update in 2000 because the Millennium Series um, Vespa PX. This is pretty remarkable. Something that was started, they started making in 1977, they did an update at the Millennium and still sell it today. Another Scoot Corley magazine. Uh, introduction from the president of uh, Piaggio USA, Peter at the time. He, um, he's introducing that Vespas will be back in the United States in the magazine in a two page uh, spread right here. And this is the press kit right when um, the Vespas were uh, reintroduced in the United States. I think it was up in uh, Sherman Oaks or Thousand Oaks. They, the first Vespa boutiques, as all the early Vespa shots were called, they were like kind of a boutique. Um, I don't know, they kind of catered around the design of the Vespa more than the, the traditional model of a dealership. But this is a press kit for the, um, the Vespas that were brought back to the United States. Some slides, no one uses those anymore. You just give somebody a digital image. <laughs> um, Vespa ET2 and ET4. Uh, they actually show the older model, but it does have the, the older engine, which is not correct, but the um, reflectors that, that were found on the United States market once. Here's the first lineup of colors in uh, 2001 that they introduced. And I, I, I'll have to be honest, I wasn't too excited. I already knew what this bike was several years prior to them bringing it to the United States. And even at that time, I was um, kind of had some um, other interest at the time. You know, so I wasn't, I was starting to lose the interest a little bit in Vespas. I've always been in the Vespas for a long time. This is a little timeline of the history of the Vespa to 2000. Vespa available again for sale in the United States of America. 1996, Vespa celebrates 50th anniversary. The new generation Vespa is born with the ET4 125. 1996, 15 million Vespa sold. 
And a lot of this stuff I don't need to go over, but it talks about Roman holiday, arrival of the Vespa in the United States, and some something else. I don't know what that is. Hmm. Oh well. Okay. So now we're fall 2001. Vespa's here in America. More ad campaigns in magazines in the United States. Kind of fun. Again, you got to keep in mind the only Vespas imported are um, the Vespa ET2 and ET4. They also had a Piaggio model I'm not talking about. But for like locations opening, they suggest New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Miami, Houston, Denver. Those are the six or, or seven original boutiques. Um, I can tell you some of them still exist in, in um, not necessarily in their original boutique form, but pretty close. Um, and the next big thing, the Vespa Gran, uh, Gran Turismo, the GT200. Uh, again, this was introduced much later in the United States. Um, like I suggest, I think this magazine this Piaggio Giornale is um, in 2001 or 2002, talking about the next major upgrade for the modern Vespa. So this is the first Vespa that, that truly goes highway speeds. You know, the 200cc, it's a liquid cooled engine. And like I suggested, um, the styling's pretty close to the modern 300 and they made a lot of incremental updates to the GT200 over the years. And another, um, this is I think the brochure they were given out in the United States for the, the Vespa right when the GT200 was introduced in 2002, 2003. Other models that were part of the Piaggio lineup. And last, 2001, American Scooters, official magazine. They talk about Colorado Vespa, and that's the boutique that was opening, the grand opening right when they started selling the new Vespas, 2001. So technically the GT200 should go after this in chronological order. And then we shoot forward um, to 2016, the 70th uh, anniversary Vespa. Uh, we no longer have any of these models to sell, but they came out with a brochure, much like they did in uh, for the 50th anniversary. You got the Vespa GTS uh, 300 ABS in two special colors, and same with the Primavera, available in two special colors just for the 70th anniversary, and the rest of the models of Vespa. And sadly, my Vespa ET4 that I first had, this is the color that it was. And the only time I ever really, like, really crashed a scooter was this poor scooter. And there it is. I don't like sharing that anybody, you know, but unfortunately I was very heavily into scooters. I have lots of motorcycles. Eventually you're going to get in a crash. It's sad to say, but that's how that poor scooter ended. This is the, uh, a sample of the color. Um, I can tell you one thing. I came out with only a scraped knee, even though that scooter doesn't look so good. Somebody ran an intersection. I hit him. It's like, what are you going to do? Just makes me a much more careful rider after something like that. And plus, I was heavily into dirt bikes, so I kind of like, kind of forgot about the Vespas for a little bit, and that made me a very, very good rider as well. You know, something to keep in mind. You know, riding off roads, sliding around, you kind of get a feel for how to handle two wheels, more so than any other riding technique. Um, I hope it wasn't too long, but kind of just sharing the um, the history that I know of of the modern Vespa and kind of an overview of the last 20 years. Hope everybody liked it. I um, hope to do more videos like that. Again, follow us on Instagram, Vespa Motorsport, or you can follow me on Instagram, Robot Vespa, and remember to subscribe to our channel. I'm going to continue to come out with pretty cool Vespa uh, videos like this, not necessarily only selling products that we sell and promoting our shop, but I want to talk more about um, the history of Vespa and both classic Vespas and the modern Vespa. See everybody later. Robot here, Vespa Motorsport.